How are you, 10th graders? This is Mr. Khalifa, and we're starting a new unit today, or a new lesson today. It's Unit 3 from HMH Trinity, Unit 3, Lesson 1. Um, if you uh, look at this lesson, you'll find it, HMH Trinity, the natural world, okay, and Unit uh, Lesson 1, uh, read. It's a short story by Margaret Atwood. I hope you've had a chance to look at the writer. She's a renowned writer who has written several interesting works. Um, as you can see, the first section of the story is entitled Reincarnation, and reincarnation is the belief of, uh, uh, you know, life, not really life after death, it's the belief that human beings are reborn into uh, life, uh, different life formats. Uh, and if we go to the, uh, uh, to the dictionary and write uh, reincarnate, uh, we can see the word there, to incarnate again, which means to again, uh, to make incarnate, such as to give bodily form and substance to, to give a concrete or actual form to. Anyway, so reincarnate means to be born into uh, a different life form, to be reborn into a different life form. Um, she begins by saying that in my previous life I was a bat. So she simply saying that she was in the previous life before being reincarnated as a human being, she was a bat. In paragraph two and three, she is simply saying that reincarnation is a common thing and uh, many creatures around us are just reincarnations of different life forms. Uh, then, if we go to paragraph uh, 5, she begins by uh, saying that bats have a few things to put up with, but they do not inflict. They do not inflict, they do not cause pain or uh, retaliate, they, they do not hurt on purpose. When they kill, they kill without mercy, but without hate. They are immune from the course of pity. And immune is a vocabulary word. Please look at it. Immune, is mean, immune means that they are protected from the curse of pity. They never gloat. And gloat is another vocabulary word. So we have immune and gloat. Uh, gloat means to boast or to feel proud about something, usually in a very unpleasant way. Um, you can watch the video on your own. Then in paragraph 6, she says that I have recurring nightmares. And then she's going to go through, uh, take us through uh, some of those nightmares. In one of them, in one of those nightmares, I am clinging to the ceiling of a summer cottage, meaning I am... Um, I am hanging to, uh, you know, by the ceiling of a summer cottage while a red-faced man in white shorts and a white TV neck t-shirt jumps up and down. She is telling us how people, in this, in this paragraph, how people are just afraid of bats, especially when they go out camping in a log cabin or something, and then they find a bat coming into their, their place. They are usually uh, get frightened, they panic, and they try to, as we see in paragraph 8, also they try to get rid of this bat. But unfortunately, the bat is the one who is trying to escape but can't find because these uh, panicky movements interfere with their radars, as the passage says, and the poor bats are unable to escape. In paragraph 9, uh, we go on into another nightmare. In another nightmare, I am winging my way, flittering, I suppose you'd call it, through the clean washed dimmy light before dawn. This is a desert. So the bat is going to his or its resting place, its home, the desert, because it's the beginning of dawn and going to be daylight. As you know, bats are nocturnal creatures and they hate 
that they hate the daylight it destroys them so again we read on this is a desert the yucas or the yucas are in bloom these are uh, uh, um, desert flower uh, desert plants i'm going to show you a picture of those uh, creatures just a moment with me here uh uh, okay, just a moment. Yes, the Yucas. In the desert. Yes, these are desert plants. Okay, we go back to the reed. So, here... Um, yes, uh, this is the desert. The yuccas are in bloom and I have been gorging myself on their juices. She's, uh, the, the plant is enjoying, sorry, the bat is enjoying uh, the, the, these plants, uh, sucking their nectar and so on. I'm heading to my home, to my home cave, where it will be cool during the burnout of day and there will be the sound of water trickling through limestone coating the rock with a glistening hush, with the moistness of new mushrooms, and the other bats will chirp and rustle and doze until night. So here, the the writer is drawing a very cool pictures, uh, uh, quietening and peaceful picture or imagery of the the habitat of the habitat of a of the plant oh sorry the habitat of the bats uh as you can see here she's saying uh, to my home cave cool the words cool uh, and then how they they protect the burnout of day and then the, look at the sound of water trickling through limestone and then coating the rock with a glistening hush this quiet picture of this nice home and so on then we move on to this uh, the paragraph um, 10 but when i reach the entrance to the cave it is sealed over it is blocked who can have done this why is this the the the, the entrance to the cave blocked it is the hand of the development people are building and destroy uh, building homes or de developing the areas uh, in the desert where the animals, those animals live like bats and uh, differently they are destroying the habitat of those animals along with the animals themselves. So in paragraph 11, I vibrate my wings, sniffing blind as a dazzle moth over the hard surface. The bat is, is completely disoriented. It doesn't know where it should go because the habitat is destroyed. Again, here uh, we can see that things are different from the perspective of a bat. The writer here gives us the perspective of those animals that are suffering, that suffer a lot because of the uh, unmindful um, development that destroys the habitat of the animals along with the animals themselves. And then in uh, the next section, section three, vampire films, the writer goes on uh, and gives us different pictures or uh, a different view of the animals. Uh, well, the vampire films from the perspective of the, the, the bats themselves. Uh, here, the, the writer is really wondering why we choose the bat as the vampire. Uh, when she says, I became aware of nature, of the nature of my previous life gradually, not only through dreams, but through the sc scraps of memory, through hints, through odd moments of recognition. Uh, there was my preference of the subtleties of dawn and dusk as opposed to the vulgar blaring uh, hour of high noon. Again, the writer is describing uh, the bat as a very sensitive character, a creature who can detect the subtleties or uh, not easily detectable, uh, detectable differences between dawn and dusk. Uh, there was my deja vu experience in the Carlsbad caverns, and those were places that were 
partially destroyed by the unheeding or unmindful hand of development. Okay, how they were replaced or how, how those homes were replaced by, uh, you know, development of restaurants and tourist uh, attraction and so on. In the next paragraph, um, she or the writer is describing um, uh, how human beings are afraid of, of the bats, presenting them as blood-sucking creatures uh, who would get in people's hair and then start sucking their blood. On the contrary, uh, bats are afraid of human beings. You wouldn't really to get, uh, like to get caught in human beings' hair because this means their death. It's the, the bats who are afraid of us, not the other way around. In paragraph 17, uh, she, the writer, um, points points criticism at vampire films when she says vampire films have always seemed ludicrous, silly to me for this reason, but also for the their bats. They are depicted or they are shown as silly creatures, huge rubbery bats with red Christmas light eyes and fangs like a saber tooth tigers and so on. And then, and then the writer goes on in paragraph four, and the bat as deadly weapon. In, in these paragraphs, uh, in these paragraphs, you will see how the bats have been depicted or, uh, or, or was thought of as deadly weapon to be uh, mounted with um, some incendiary uh, devices or explosive devices uh, and then used as weapons to uh, go off in order to uh, destroy the enemy but uh, they were not used because the atom bomb was used later, okay? Um, again, she's making this funny comparison when she says that people are afraid of bats more than they are of, uh, of, of bombs just because the bombs are metal. Uh, here, the cities went up in flames anyway, but not with the aid of bats. The atom bomb had been invented and the fiery bat was no longer thought necessary. If the bats had been used, after all, would there have been a war memorial to them? And then, if you ask a human being what makes his flesh creep more, a bat or a bomb, he will say the bat. It is difficult to experience loathing for something merely metal. Again, here the writer is making fun of our uh, illogical fear of bats, the harmless, peaceful creatures. Why should we be afraid of them? And then, and then uh, uh, in, per in section five, beauty, uh, perhaps it isn't my life as a bat that was the interlude. Interlude means a short period between two events. Uh, she's claiming that perhaps her life as a bat was not the interlude and her original life was the the being ba bad itself and she is here as a writer uh, for a higher purpose to protect the animals she's been sent on a mission as a human being to save her 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 uh, creatures or her people which are the bats uh, we go on reading perhaps it is this life perhaps i have been sent into human form as if on a dangerous mission to save and redeem my own folk when i have gained a small success or died in the attempt for failure in such a task against such odds is more likely i will be born again back into that other form that other world where i am where i where i truly belong and then and then the writer goes on in paragraph 24, more and more I think this event with longing, the quickness of heartbeat, the vivid plunge into the nectars of crepsicular, succular flowers hovering in the effort. She, again, this is a sort of longing for the beautiful life of a bat, uh, the great thing that she enjoyed, the beauty of nature, uh, away from all, all those uh, strange, or noisy uh, noise of the human beings and so on 
Uh, and then she continues in paragraph 26. And in the evening, the supersonic hymn of praise to our creator, the greater, the creator of bats who appears to us in the form of a bat and who gave us all things, water and liquid of stone and the woody refuge of attics, petals and fruit of juice, insects and the beauty of silver, slippery wings and sharp white canines and shining eyes. Uh, Again, she is presenting the bats as a great community, a community that lives in peace and uh, and praises God for whatever blessings it has uh, or God has given them. Uh, and then and then she tells us that these bats, like any other creatures, ask for one thing: for survival, for food, for the increase of their kind, and they do not want to harm anybody else unlike man who wants to destroy them or who who destroys them by coming to their habitat and destroying them uh, and then she is begging for the goddess of caves and grottoes which is most probably nature to bless its children to bless the children of nature the bats uh, and this brings us to the end of uh, of reading this um, uh, this uh, essay or the short story. Sorry, if you have any questions, please uh, uh, okay uh, uh, forward them or put them on the YouTube on the WhatsApp group, and we'll be working on that. Thank you very much for listening or watching, and uh, I'm waiting for your questions.